really, really excited to be here. Uh, thanks so much for the, to the organizers and you guys and, and Lyme disease, apparently, for bringing us all together today. <laughs> So I'm going to talk today about the evolution and adaptive significance of low intelligence among fishes. So my hypothesis is that fish are pretty stupid. And <laughs> but not only that, in keeping with the theme of tonight, that it's adaptive, that it's an evo evolutionary be evolutionarily beneficial. So I, I start here with a graph of log body weight to log brain weight of, of vertebrates in general, so the major lineages. Um, so, if you notice here in blue, the ray finned fishes, which are bony fishes rather than cartilaginous fishes, um, are lower on the totem pole of brain size to the other vertebrates. So, it seems as though they have smaller brains. And we know from previous research that brain size correlates pretty closely with cognitive abilities such as social learning and ecological innovation. And so, there is a link between brain size and intelligence among bony fishes. And so you can see, again, the light blue ray finned fishes, pretty low brain size compared to even things like cartilaginous fishes, which are sharks. So if you would think, just looking at this data, that maybe fish aren't that smart because they're, they're pretty primitive. They haven't developed intelligence. However, if you look at sharks, they have pretty high intelligence. And so you can hypothesize that the ancestor to sharks, tetrapods, and fit ray finned fishes actually was pretty smart. And the presence of low intelligence in fishes is actually a representative of a new evolution and actually an adaptive trait. I was really interested in trying to figure out more about the personality of fishes and, and intelligence in fishes. And so I actually, what I did was I polled my Facebook friends. I relied on the sort of crowdsourcing strategy. And I asked them to describe either their cat or dog or their pet fish in one word. And so they sent me a one word response. And one axis is whether or not the word was more associated with intelligence or stupidity, and the other axis was whether or not, in general, it was a positive or negative trait. What I found is, in general, the wor words uh, that my friends used to describe their pet fish clustered with uh, words that were sort of um, related to stupidity. So for, their, for fish, they used carefree, brainless, dull, hungry. Uh, <laughs> Whereas with their, their mammalian pets, they used words like patient, affectionate, strategic, loving. And the other thing that I noticed about this data is that many of the words that people used to describe their pet fish had sort of a negative connotation. So in general, people don't think that the, their, the lives of their pet fish are really that, that great, in addition to the people thinking that their, their pet fish are rather stupid. And so that led me to think about the link between intelligence and having a good life. So maybe if you have a bad life, maybe it's not such a good thing to be aware of it. So I have here an adaptive landscape of intelligence among vertebrates. And you can see uh, if, if a fish is uh, more intelligent and more aware of its miserable life, uh, for example, they don't uh, have internal fertilization, which can't be really fun, uh, <laughs> really low survival rates of larval and juveniles, and just really boring lives, according to my other data. Uh, they, they suffer a fitness drop if they become too aware of their plights. So it seems that there is likely an adaptive peak in an area of really low intelligence relative to the lives of, of sharks, mammals, and birds, which may have a higher uh, peak uh, where, where intelligence is actually pretty beneficial to them. In conclusion, uh, ha um, fish are stupid because their lives are terrible, and if they were aware of it, <laughs> then they would die. So.